Hey guys, Thomas from Team Sakurazo here. Come at you guys with another Yu-Gi-Oh! Mark Watch today, and we have a lot of buyouts to go over. So go grab a snack, sit tight, and we're gonna get right into it. If you guys enjoy this content, make sure to smash that like button. The goal, like always, is 100 likes. Subscribe if you have not already. I have something awesome planned for 3,300 subs. But if we hit 3,500 subs by the end of the year, you guys are going to get an amazing opening. You guys are going to love it. Also, if you're buying any cards off TCG Player, please use my fill link down in the description below. It helps out the channel to know initial cost to you. Thank you to all my YouTube channel members, and like always, if you want me to go over any cards or alert me of any buyouts, let me know in the comment section below, and we're going to get right into it. So, Testudo Eret Newman here from Shining Darkness. Neither player can special summon monsters with 1800 or more attack. Now, I've actually talked about this card when it spiked up beforehand, saying, hey, this card does not have a reprint, and it's a one-for-one -one target. Uh, as well as, it is water. If this was level 2, it'd be bonkers. Like, imagine if they accidentally made this a level 2. I don't even want to imagine what spread is. Well, you want copies of this card. It's like $9, $10. First in life, play for $10.25. You know, that's pretty awful for a common. But seeing what this card does and how long it's been doing that, you got a nice little wall here at $10 for your copies. But if people start breaking that wall and this card starts seeing some major play, you're paying $15 to $25 for this card. It's hard for me to complain about a $10 common when Yu-Gi-Oh! has been having, like, card of demise, for example. Many commons are worth, like, $8 to $10. Uh, back in my day, we had Vandy's Emptiness at $25.30. So, and that was awful because you couldn't even find the card, much less figure out a way to purchase it. So, it was just, ah, man. Uh, Wind Up Kid Ultimate Rare is at the point where I'm thinking, do I want to even keep my own? Because if you guys don't know, I used to play Wind Ups and I really like that deck. And I had two kittens to play in the deck. And I actually told people to get this four sprite uh, back when they were first starting up. It didn't see too much play at first, but then when it came to Runic, uh, you know, sprite, a lot of people started playing this card again. You target Monster Poke Controls. Return to the hand. And it's only once while it's face up on the field. That's windup's gimmick if you did not know. They're not once per turn. They're just once while it's on the field. So if you put windup can 20 times on the field, you get 20 bounces. So ultimate rares here. You have $63 for a first set like play. Then $75.80 for unlimited. This guy's stacked with them. I'll tell you that. If we go unverified here, I mean... Your chances are pretty pretty much the same thing here. I don't know if these are at the point of where I actually want to keep them for their price point. I'm not too sure. I'm going to have to make that decision later. Ultra Rares. Now, I have this as well. 36 for a lightly played, 50 for a near mint. No, thank you. If you have this card and you're not using it, sell it immediately. Uh, if you don't like the build, definitely go ahead and sell it. However, I do want to elaborate that this is a wind-up card, and wind-ups have not seen any reprint besides, like, random commons in, like, Battles of Legends, mind you. Because I know they give, like, wind-up solder, like, a reprint every two years randomly. But 95% and above wind-up cards haven't got a reprint in the last 10 years, if at all. Wind-up kidding, literally never getting a reprint. Konami hates this archetype with a passion. Uh, then we have the Runix itself here. Tips at $94.95. Not bad. $60 for your fountains. I saw these at like $45.50. And I said like literally if you want to grab this. It's not too bad for a fountain. Even for like a tip. $95. I mean if it's meta relevant. And it's a CR. $95 is really not that bad of a price point. Uh, CR is at $61. Not bad. Regular Ultras here at $38.39. You know. That's not ideal. If you picked up your Unix stuff earlier. Well you definitely won. You got the Hagen Dash. Over here, I know it's called Huggins, by the way. I just call it Hagen Dash. Uh, she's right over here at $16, $17. I told people at $6, hey, I think this is where you should pick this card up because these cards were too low, as well as er almost every deck building set. I was wrong with Ancient Guardians, but I never even said to get Ancient Guardians. Uh, they hold cards are like five, six, seven dollars usually. You got fountains here at 14s, and then everything else is pretty cheap here. So if you want to play Runix. It doesn't cost an arm and a leg here uh, to grab them. Granted, it's not, you know, a great point, uh, place to put your money. But hey, for a meta deck, this is as cheap as it usually gets. At least for an engine. 
Uh, number 101, Silent Honor Arc. Now, I don't know what's with this card, but if you go to First Eds, and you go to Light Plays and Near Mints here, no Lightly Plays, you got Near Mint, and this is literally how I found out about this card. I literally went here and said, huh, you know, I have a couple of these spare Ultras, because I really love this card, if you guys don't know. This was the best Rank 4 XYZ for a while. Uh, one of the best, because we got another special boy in this set. Uh, if you guys don't know what this card does, you detach two materials from this card, detach a bunch of the monster, and you take, you attach it as a material. And if this card will be destroyed, you detach a material from this card instead, right? So it's a pretty good card, actually, for a rank 4, even to this day, but it was amazing back in the day. I don't know why this is $40, I really don't understand. Especially when we have the Ghost Rare here, which, I know the product quality might not be that great, but 22 for light play, near mitts are 24. So, Ultra's at 32. And going up to 40, mind you. Like, I I, I don't, I just don't get it. And then, Ghost, or Ghost Rare's at 24. Before we even get into ulti, I just want to say one of the greatest things about being a vendor and going through your inventory and buying from other people is you learn about buyouts that nobody knows about or cards are about to essentially be bought out or are on the heavy climb up. Because you'll look up a card and you'll go, huh, that's weird. Like, if you don't know the price for certain and all that. And I, I don't know why this is bought out. I, I, I don't get it. You guys are going to have to tell me. Uh, Ultimate Rares, which I actually do love ulti more than the Ghost Rare. 25, 27. If you guys are debating between the Ghost and the ulti, get, get the ulti. 26 here, then going up to like 35 here, definitely grab the Ultimate Rare. Blue Eyes Jet Dragon Secret from Battle of Chaos. Now, this card is going up 16 listings, mind you. So, we got 17, 18 here. Well, here. Let's go near mints here. 18, 20s over here. You know, put on verified as well. I apologize. 18, 22, 35s here. Meaning that Battles of Chaos has Illusion of Chaos uh, at 35, 40. And then you have Guardian Chimera. Why this card is going up to 2030, I can't really tell you here. Allu Let's see. Illusion of Chaos here at 37. Chimera at 53. You know, this box is not too bad. Honestly. And then you can pull the Dark Magician. You got Advent as an Ultra for 28. I mean, you know, you got a $6 Ultra right here. This set's really not bad sealed right now. If you guys actually have access to this sealed set for like 60, might not be too bad. The Starlight Rare is not going up, which is weird because I told people this is one of the best Starlights for 100 below that you could get. Uh, you got about 98 here. Basically, let's call it a spade a spade, $100 going up to 110 still. Uh, it does go up to 160 on the next page here, but people need to start clearing out copies. If you're looking for a good Starlight investment here, or you have, say, $300 to invest and you want to invest this in Starlights mainly... I think a place that a blue eyes jet dragon is really good to grab at this price point because it was it's gonna go up. Can this card go up to three hundred dollars eventually? Yes, but it can at least bright blue coming out of power of the elements here around fifty one to fifty five dollars here. It's not too bad for a blue if you're able to get these. The rest of the deck is relatively cheap. If you all play this with Rudick, you're looking at a pretty penny. However, elves at twenty two, but the card is played in. Multiple things. People actually say that Sprite Elf is too broken and could get even worse and worse in the future. This is the hit they want to see is actually a ban to Sprite Elf. Uh, I need to see how bad this card is. It is very good. I believe it's brought Tri Brigade back in the game, which is really nice here. But Sprite are way too new to get hit. You got Sprint here at $31 here for a Secret Rare. I think it's going to drop to $20 and probably stabilize around $15 to $22, something around there. Uh, then you have the Sprite Starters at about 5. Uh, you know, Gigantics at about 3 is here. And that's really it for Sprite. Cherubini here with one of the dumbest buyouts I've ever seen. And you guys might be thinking, this isn't a dumb buyout. You probably just don't know what it's for. The reason why this is getting bought out is because you're able to make Draco Sack, make the tokens, and then make Cherubini with said tokens. And then you're able to go further from there, right? Uh, the ultras are $10 going up to 20s. 
And I actually told people to get this at two dollars. And as a, I never think it dropped below two dollars. But if it did, I kept telling people to get it at around two to three dollars. I always told people it's not only a burning abyss card, but it's a good card overall. Phantom Knights, for example, love this card as well. So if Phantom Knights ever come back in the format as a, you know, a good contender to the meta, Cherubini is also going to go up. So why am I calling this a bad buy? Especially because you guys know I love the artwork. The reason why this is a bad ult buyout is because this card got bought out to about eight to ten dollars here but the secret the secret rare this is actually the most expensive it took a while to get the 13 dollars getting here to 15 16s going up to 17 dollars the ultra was about nine dollars while the secret yesterday was like 11 bucks for a first edition mind you 11 to 12 people were actually thinking they were saving two three dollars by getting the ultra rare reprint of this card rather than the secret and the secret just did not budge just the ultra went to the moon right going from a two to two and a half dollar card not even touching three to almost double digits here and that's just absolutely stupid if you have ultras sell your ultra and just get a secret rare right order a secret rare this first i likely play works completely fine just sell your ultra and upgrade right it's absolutely ridiculous this card below 20 dollars is still pretty dumb so get your secret rares while you can uh chamber dragon made start rare someone wanted me to go over this because they said hey you made the right call on this uh because it's gone up well 480 now going up to 645 going up to 700 you know if i didn't have to pay my taxes i'd love to get this you know i, I couldn't afford it two three weeks ago and now i i definitely cannot afford it <laughs> stardust dragon starlight rare now I ended up getting one of these because I was like, dude, it's a, no it's a matter of time before these go up. I thought that I had till the end of this year to get one. And I ended up getting one at Nationals, believe it or not. And I was super happy with it. You know, I said, this card is going to go up to 1500 But it's going to take a while because, you know, Dawn of Majesty isn't that great of a sealed set. Um, It's only good for the moment, which I still stand by that, right? It was good for two, three months when all the brand Despise stuff went up. But... Thousand dollars from not even a thousand sales, nineteen hundred. Now there is an AGS Starlight here, and I don't care if people don't like this the the, the company or not. At least it's a graded card for an eight hundred, better than a raw card for a thousand. If it's an AGS nine, it has to be at least a minimum of lightly played, right? I don't know much about AGS. Now you have an Italian here for not for about half. And look, I I'm gonna say the exact same thing. If this was three fifty. I probably try to figure out a way to get it uh, for myself because I love Italian cards, uh, and that would this would be like my personal copy. But four sixty nine, if the other versions are a thousand plus, I'm mean, getting a foreign copy for less than half. It's a gamble, but it's at least Italian, right? It languages do matter because a lot more players would prefer Italian, possibly German, over other languages, right? Like a lot, of, like Portuguese is usually the least favored. Uh, that I've noticed Spanish has a great fan base, but it's usually uh, worth a bit less Korean and all that are bottom of the barrel because you, know, you can't play them technically so, so Yeah, Starlight Dragon going up to the moon here boxes if you want to get two cases and try your luck, which I highly recommend not doing 67 okay the, what else can you pull from here, right, to make your gamble on this card worth it? Well, you have a 125 Starlight Rare, a 100 Starlight Rare, which these aren't too bad, mind you. $88 Starlight Rare with Logan, and then you have that one, right? So the Starlight Rares, value-wise, are really not that good besides Stardust here. Uh, well, what else can you pull? Well, you have a Lubers here at, like, what, 10 bucks, 11 bucks, 12 bucks, $10. All right, that's the best card you can pull out of the set. I'm not going to go much further. All you need to know is this is not a great set. Let's get reprinted. This did not get reprinted in the tins. Okay, well, I would keep an eye on this card a little bit, but like I don't have faith in it because if it saw literally zero play, I don't care if it didn't get reprinted or not. It's not going to see play. People don't want to play it by this point. Vampire Hunter from Shadow Spectres is also bought out. So if you go to first editions here, you have likely plates for a dollar, two dollars, but 30 listings, it ain't too much, right? You don't near mints. Quickly goes up to a $12 card, right? And there's just maybe a place or two to stop it. The reason why this card is going up, if you guys don't know, it's our damage check. This card battles dark monster, destroy the monster, right? So it's a 
a warrior, so it's a royal target, so you can reinforce it, search it, and then it's essentially like a semi alley of justice catastrophe. That's not why it's going up, mind you, but the card is not that terrible overall. I don't remember seeing this card seeing a lick of play when it came out. Uh, much less anything in Shadow Spectre is really seeing much play. Like, people play Ghost Tricks for fun, right? But that set, except for like a Felgrand here and there, and I think like a little bit of Noble Knight support, like, Shadow Spectres was one of the worst flopping sets back then when it came out. Uh, which is really funny because it's really loved now. <laughs> but I remember like, shops when i came back in 2018 if you guys don't know shops were still littered with shadow specters i was getting boxes for 30 40 and i held and actually that was my first sealed investment and uh it went really well as you guys could tell i uh, i've opened boxes on the channel before i've you know got rid of them i still have i think one or two boxes left I i've made by profit tenfold essentially on um, really really appealing set when it comes to artwork right wise and vampire hunter is no exception the reason why i believe this card is bought out is because it is a castlevania reference right it is an original print high rarity castlevania um you know card maybe players who don't even like Yu Gi Oh like this card just because again castlevania it's cool that konami was working different ips into this game in fact i think it's a great thing to do with something that if they did put this in shadow specters which granted what other better set even from a business and any perspective, you're going to put the Vampire series into a Halloween set, especially if it's right around the corner, right? Which Shadow Spectres was, right? And it flopped, and I guess they just thought, oh, well, maybe we shouldn't do that. But I really wish they did more of that. You know, imagine if we got a Silent Hill reference card. You know, if you guys don't know, I love Silent Hill a lot. Um, I would love to see it. I know there's some plans with Silent Hills in the works in the last two months, but I... I'm sick and tired of seeing rumors with Kona, uh, me in general. Like, I'll look at a little bit of, like, Resident Evil leaks here and there, perhaps. But, like, until I see any something, they give us something concrete, I don't get excited anymore. Horus, the Black Flame Dragon, level 8 here. This card is, you want half Slobberdon that doesn't even have a first edition stamp? $100. You should just pay your bills at that point. First ed mods are about, you know, 190 Uh... Unlimited lightly plays for 200. First, I light play 500. First, and your mint is about $10,000. No, thank you. Uh, VLP minor foil shift. Okay. You know, that's it's just what, what else am I supposed to say? If you really want these for 500, I mean, just, just don't. That's all I have to say. In fact, I want to see what the sales are in here. Yeah, nobody's buying like 400. One person bought this card. Uh, granted, I think collectors got this at a lot cheaper. I don't know. Level six. I remember when I told people, hey, it's good to get this card because it could go up like Horus. Well, first I'd like to play 125, which I told people to get this card 3040. So if you got it and you're upset, well, you tripled your money if you want to get rid of it. You want to wait till these two copies are essentially done. In fact, there's some uh, copies here that are, um, you know, uh, 340 sales or less. You know, 344 sales or less. 150, 170. If you got a near mint, 220, cool. Should you get this card? Uh, think it's going to go up like the other one? Well, you could. You're playing a big waiting game. I'd just rather get a Starlight Rare Blue Eyes jet instead of paying more for a card that I don't even like. I personally just, I don't like Horus as an archetype, if you guys can't tell. As an investment, I thought it was okay. Even In fact, I actually uh, had one of these and then got rid of it not super long ago. Just because I'm like, well, I made something off it, get rid of it. And it was just a hassle to get rid of as well. Huge, huge, huge hassle. Number 89. Uh, mine hacker here. These are back down to a little less than three bucks, uh, going up to about three fifty here. Uh, if you guys don't have this card, I'm gonna say the exact same thing I'm. I said last time you don't want this card, but if you're looking to say, hey, you think this card could go up to seven eights now again, back up again, and you're like, you know what, I'll take um, you know, a bit of a gamble at three. I think getting these for three dollars, a two seventy five for uh, you know, play set that's about eight twenty five, you know. Eight to ten bucks for a place that here, not too terrible. 
Uh, Evil Swarm Exciton Knight, Legacy of the Valiant here. These are about 13 for Unlimited. First editions. These are something stupid, ain't they? Uh, 20 bucks. Okay. 22, 24. Man, the rank fours they gave us in Legacy of the Valiant were so good. Not only do we get number 101, but this card, once per chain, which we have a shot tree uh, law card. Uh, that's a once per chain. That's uh, absolutely ridiculous. Oh, right now, like once per chain should not be given to ver to p cards that are very powerful. Like I understand power crap goes crazy in this game and it's unavoidable, but you could just easily just not put once per chain, right? Once per chain during your main phase or your opponent's battle phase. If your opponent has more total cards in their hand and their side of the field than you do, you detach material from this card, destroy all our monsters on the field or all other cards. My fault. Also, your opponent takes no further damage this turn, and this is a quick effect. So, this card could start its own chain, mind you, by the way. So, you know, you know, there's you can't just, like, remove it somehow, a way or another. So, card is just busted. I remember when this card was banned for very good reasons, honestly. It's crazy how we uh, we have this card that came back, but when it comes to the Volo chain, we still have that banned. I just find that funny. Granted, Lavalo Chain is going to open up combos just because of the Foolish Burial effect uh, and possibly the stack effect, but I don't know. It's just very funny to see the direction the game goes over the years. Alsai, still no reprint. $18 going up to 20 If you have this card lying around and you're not using it, just go ahead and sell it. Bujinki Tsukiyomi here. You detach a material from the card you sell cards in your hand to the graveyard, uh, and then you draw two cards, but you have to have a minimum of one. When this card with extra signature leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you target a level 4 Bujin Beast Warrior uh, type monster in your graveyard up to the number of XYZ materials that are attached to this card. It's a bunch of those targets. So if you make this and it gets blown up immediately, you basically special summon two more Bujins and leak off. I remember Bujins got some sort of support like a while ago and it did absolutely nothing. I actually completely forgot about this deck. But this card is good because for light decks, it, it just lets you draw a card, essentially. Go plus one. And then you get to have something in the grave. I remember when I played this with Stellar Knights, and I used this card to get my second Deneb uh, in the grave. Or a ver this was a way to get Deneb in the grave because uh, some or cause something you would be able to do is if you already had access to your Deneb, uh, like in grave or you got one banter, you need to put Deneb in grave. In order to reborn with Altair, get, you know, do something, right? Because sometimes you need to have a certain cards in the grave. You make this, you discard the that card, and then you draw two new cards. And if one of them was something like the bridge, it was just, oh, you were popping off. So good. I remember when I was topped a YCS with this deck. And the sixth Necros just killed me by banishing Altair from my hand. Oh, it was bad. $7. Seven seventy one for your near mints. I actually think there's a good, great ulti to get. Less than eight dollars. This card does spike up to fifteen twenty five sometimes, then goes immediately back down. Uh, number thirty nine, Utopia Roots here. Uh, when a mo any player's monster declares attack, you detach mature from this card, negate the attack, and if you negate next XYZ monster's attack, this card gains attack equal to that monster's rank at times five hundred. Right, this card's not really good, but it's a Utopia card. First editions are, well, unlimited are like six. First said, like, play eight near mints here for about eight to nine. Uh, I mean, it's a Utopia card. If you could get it for cheaper, go for it, I would say. But would I pick this card up? No, you could just get this card instead. Uh, number C101, Silent Honor Dark. I thought since we're going over Legacy of the Valiant, and which, by the way, was just such an amazing set uh, back in the day. It did power creep the game, but it, it just gave us tools. The, uh, to the rank 4 engine that we never would dream of. Uh, 3 level 5 monsters. You guys don't care about this effect. It's a, it's a, you don't have to read it. It's a number of cards. That's really all you gotta know. $20 for your first and lightly plays here. That's not good, but it's an ulti at least. First and near mint are about $25.26. I would just grab the near mint. Don't try to save $5, $6 and get a light play copy you're not happy with or you could see damage and it kind of ruins the whole thing. It's a collector card, and it's pretty rare, especially because Silent Honor, just in general, has done a lot for the game. Not this card itself, mind you. Ultras, 245. I want to look at these cards and compare them to Silent Honor Dark here. 245, $3, $4 here. Fives. I mean, it's going up. 
The only other version that you have, I think, is a rare, right? You have the maximum gold rare, and then you have... Oh, they put this as a common. That's adorable. Yeah, so ultra rares here for cheap. Not too bad of an investment if you want them. I wouldn't get the mega packs personally. I would get the original printings of this card. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this. Whatever this... You know, we'll, we'll give it one shot here. Gwen Hafafar. Gwen Hafar. Uh, Queen of Noble. You could have named her Jennifer. Queen of Noble Arms. Like, say, the Valiant here. Uh, this is the Equip Spell for Noble Knights. I believe the only other version is maybe, like, a Platinum and possibly a Rare. No, it's actually just a Platinum. Uh, this card does look pretty, though. I mean, it really does look like a printing... Uh, like a printing... A painting here. First edition light plates are $6. You want a first edition near mint here? $8. It's a, a card to look at because Noble Knights are so popular, even to this day. You know, it has its fan base. It is niche, mind you, but still has its fan base. And I always kind of hated back in the day how they kept giving Noble uh, Knights secret rare cards, like one or two every single set. And I was just sitting here like, this deck is bad. Like, if people pro would, like, look back at these cards and be like, wow, Noble Knights was probably a tier... Tier 1, Tier 1.5 deck. And it's like, it wasn't even considered rogue. It was just considered bad. Like, I don't know, even, even back then, I could actually count on one hand how many times I ran into a Noble Knight deck. And I won every single time. Rainbow Karibo. Uh, this is just another Karibo. Uh, punch monster cards attack. You can target that monster, equip this card from your hand to that target, and it can attack. Okay, so... Okay, it's a cool little hand thing you could do. When your opponent declares a direct attack, you special summon this card from your graveyard. If you special summon this way, banish it when it leaves the field. So, has a little bit of a graveyard effect. It's a level 1 as well. It looks really cool as well. First editions here, because that's all I care about. $250, $350, $4 going up to. But near mints are really going up to $9, $10 here for your secret rares. Uh, has, I think, the Mega Pack and... Okay, and Advent Calendar Supers, which, why, why would you grab that when you could grab this? Mega Pack Secrets, in fact, I would rather grab Mega Pack Secret than this. Then you have, yeah, the Common from Structure Deck, which is a dollar. So, people like this card. It's not necessarily great, but people like this card. That's what I'll leave it at. And then, last of all, Sylvan Hermitry. If you guys know what this card does, you activate the top card of your deck if it's a plant, uh, send it to Graveyard, and then draw a card. And then, if it's not, you place it at the bottom of the deck. If this card is excavated and sent to the by card effect, you look at the three cards on top of your deck, then place them on top of the deck in any order. This card was so good, and I remember all the fun times I had playing Sylvans. Like, you could set up Felgrand, the Tachyon card, some other stuff. They were all beefy. Um, it, you could, And then if you have Soul Charge, you, like, you could put some crazy rank 8s on the board. You know, Oreo was great. It was kind of like a worse Tiramisu, but it was still really good here. Oh, man. I, I really do miss this deck. I love how they gave it a Link Monster. If I ever come across a Sylvan Core, I will attempt to play it again. Because I really love it. Uh, if you guys don't know, plants are probably one of my favorite archetypes. If not my favorite archetype in the game. Uh, about 3D1 here. $3 here. In fact, we're first officially at for near mints. 4 going up to five five fifty. You know, I really wish that they gave this deck more than a Link. Like, if they just gave it two new cards. That, that's it, right? The Link, a monster, and you know what? Maybe a spell, like a, a spell or something. Because this card, this deck has a lot going for it. But it just struggles with certain stuff. If they had a special summon a Sylvan card from your uh, deck, and then if you do, uh, you can excavate uh, the top three cards of your deck or something. You know, I think this this deck could have been a little bit, you know, relevant. At least in the casual department. But, sad to say it's not. If you guys enjoyed this Mark Watch, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe. If you're buying any cards off TCG Player, please use my affiliate link down in the description below. It helps out the channel to know that it costs you. Tomorrow, I will be streaming. I will be having a live Mark Watch at 10pm Central. Uh, I will also be having a box battle against uh, Tane Jobrik here for uh, Tactical Masters. So... We'll have that, and I have some OTS packs for donations, so you guys know how it is. Hopefully, I'll see you guys there, and you guys have a great rest of your day.